How do you increase focus? You know, people are so familiar with sitting down, reading a couple pages of a book and realizing that none of it sunk in. Or talking to someone and seeing their mouth move, maybe even nodding your head subconsciously and go, mm hmm, mm hmm, and none of it sinks in. This can be very damaging for school, work performance, and relationships, as many of you know. Costello, incidentally, never seems to pay attention to anything I say while looking directly at me, which contradicts what I'm about to say, which is that the best way to get better at focusing is to use the mechanisms of focus that you were born with. And the key principle here is that mental focus follows visual focus. We are all familiar with the fact that our visual system can be unfocused, blurry, or jumping around, or we can be very laser focused on one location in space. What's interesting and vitally important to understanding how to access neuroplasticity is that you can use your visual focus and you can increase your visual focus as a way of increasing your mental fo focus abilities more broadly. So I'm gonna explain how to do that. Plasticity starts with alertness. And as I mentioned before, that alertness can come from a sense of love, a sense of joy, a sense of fear, doesn't matter. There are pharmacologic ways to access alertness too. The most common one is of course caffeine, which if you watch the sleep episodes, you know, reduces this molecule that makes us sleepy called adenosine. Uh, I drink plenty of caffeine. I'm a you know heavy user of caffeine. I don't think abuser of caffeine. I think in reasonable amounts, provided we can still fall asleep at night, caffeine can be a relatively safe way to increase epinephrine. Now, many people are now also using Adderall. Adderall chemically looks a lot like amphetamine. And basically it is amphetamine. It will increase epinephrine release from locus ceruleus. It will wake up the brain. And that's why a lot of people rely on it. It does have a heavy basis for use in certain clinical syndromes prescribed such as attention deficit. However, it also has a high probability of abuse, especially in those who are not prescribed it. The acetylcholine system and the focus that it brings is available, as I mentioned, through pharmacology, but also through be these behavioral practices. And the behavioral practices that are anchored in visual focus are going to be the ones that are going to allow you to develop great depth and duration of focus. So let's think about visual focus for a second. When we focus on something visually, we have two options. We can either look at a very small region of space with a lot of detail and a lot of precision, or we can dilate our gaze and we can see big pieces of visual space with very little detail. It's a trade-off. We can't look at everything at high resolution. This is why we have these, the, the pupil more or less relates to the fovea of the eye, which is the area in which we have the most receptors, the highest density of receptors that perceive light. And so our acuity is much better in the center of our visual field than in our periphery. It's a simple experiment you can do right now. If you're listening to this, you can still do it. You can hold your, your hands out in front of you, provided that you're sighted, you should be able to see how many fingers you have in front of you. For me, it's five, still got all five fingers, amazingly enough. If I move, my hand off to the side and I'm, I can't see them with precision, but as I move them back into the center of my visual field, I can see them with precision. And that's because the density, the number of pixels in the center of my visual field is much higher than it is in the periphery. When we focus our eyes, we do a couple things. First of all, we tend to do that in the center of our visual field and our two eyes tend to align in what's called a virgin's eye movement towards a common point. The other thing that happens is the lens of our eye moves so that our brain now no longer sees the entire visual world, but is seeing a small cone of visual imagery. If it, <laughs> that was the dog bumping into the wall, forgive me. That small cone of visual imagery or soda straw view of the world has much higher acuity, higher resolution than if I were to look at everything. Now you say, of course, this makes perfect sense, but that's about visual attention, not mental attention. Well, it turns out that focus in the brain is anchored to our visual system. I'll talk about blind people in a moment, but assuming that somebody is sighted, the key is to learn how to focus better visually if you want to bring about higher levels of cognitive or mental focus, even if you're engaged in a physical task. When we move our eyes slightly inward, maybe you can tell that I'm doing it like, like so, basically shortening or, or making the interpupillary distance as it's called smaller, 
two things happen. Not only do we develop a smaller visual window into the world, but we activate a set of neurons in our brainstem that trigger the release of both norepinephrine, epinephrine, and acetylcholine. Norepinephrine is kind of similar to epinephrine. So in other words, when our eyes are relaxed in our head, when we're just kind of looking at our entire visual environment, moving our head around, moving through space, we're in optic flow, things moving past us, or we're sitting still, we're looking broadly at our space, we're relaxed. When our eyes move slightly inward toward a particular visual target, our visual world shrinks, our level of visual focus goes up, and we know that this relates to the release of acetylcholine and epinephrine at the relevant sites in the brain for plasticity. Now, what this means is that if you have a hard time focusing your mind for sake of reading or for listening, you need to practice and you can practice focusing your visual system. Now, this works best if you practice focusing your visual system at the precise distance from the work that you intend to do for sake of plasticity. So how would this look in the real world? Let's say I am trying to concentrate on something related to, I don't know, science. I'm reading a science paper and I'm having a hard time. It's not absorbing. I might think that I'm only looking at the paper that I'm reading. I'm only looking at my screen, but actually my eyes are probably darting around a bit. Experiments have been done on this. Or I'm gathering information from too many sources in, in the visual environment. Now, presumably because it's me, I've already had my coffee, I'm hydrated, I'm well well rested, I slept well, and I still experience these challenges in focusing. Spending just 60 to 120 seconds focusing my visual attention on a small window of my screen, meaning just on my screen with nothing on it, but bringing my eyes to that particular location increases not just my visual acuity for that location, but it brings about an increase in activity in a bunch of other brain areas that are associated with gathering information from this location. So put simply, if you want to improve your ability to focus, practice visual focus. Now, if you wear contacts or you have, or you wear uh, corrective lenses, that's fine. You of course would wanna use those. You don't wanna take those off and use a, a blurry image. The finer the visual image and the more that you can hold your gaze to that visual image, the higher your levels of attention will be. 